We are giving away five beta keys in this episode. Do you want a beta key? I want a beta key. And you know how you have to get it? You know what how, the contest how, is? How can I get a beta key? The first five people to go into the street and kill people with their mouths, like a Zerg. Yeah. And send us pictures of it, get the beta keys. The first, the first, no, the first five people to go into the street who don't have mouths, like Protoss, get a beta key. First five people to sew their mouths shut. Shut like Protoss. <laughs> and send us pictures And learn to make electricity come out of their brain. A anyways, we don't ex exactly know of the contest yet, but we're going to put it in annotations. So at some point during this episode, there's going to be an annotation pop up on YouTube um, telling you exactly how you can... The rules of the contest. Yes, and, and, and how you can mm -hmm. enter. And we have five keys yep. this week and five keys next week. So make sure to check out this week's and next week's episode. episode. And there's other contests going on at StarCraft.org. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of Lots chances of beta to keys. It's like a beta key extravaganza. Yeah. Beta scanza. So, anyway, welcome to StarCraft Amateur Hour. StarCraft 2 Amateur Hour presented by StarCraft.org. StarCraft Woo! And um, I'm Negative Sons. And I am Guns Akimbo. And we have a cool game for you guys today, uh, a patch 9 game, which is the new patch, uh, and they released this new awesome 1v1 map. Yes, what's it called? Uh, in, I think it's Incineration Zone. It's the first um, Lava World map, um, and it's really cool, and it's a really like, intense, very close-quartered uh, map with lots of ways to get to your opponent's base and lots of you know s back doors and sneaky stuff so so real quick let's just show the map before things get too intense uh you start you you know it's a mirrored map it mirrors along a, a, heart, a diagonal rule um there's your main base here your natural expand here um the main path around your opponent's base and then there's a secondary main path above the other main path where you have his own Naga Watchtower, so you know controlling that is also really important. There's a, sh a shared, there's one gold mineral which uh, is base here, which is directly rock. between yeah. the two bases, mm -hmm. um, and there's backdoor of rocks at both opponents' base, at both people's bases, and then another really short path and another expansion. Expansion, location. and so th these are the backdoors, and then there's these two uh, lower expansions. For yeah, both and there's lots of different ramps all over the place, lots of high ground, low ground, and lots of ways to you know use cliffs to your advantage. It's a very, very technical map, I think. It may, might be the my new favorite map. It's definitely, uh, you know, next to Kulas Ravine, the most technical StarCraft two map so far, and I, I really enjoy it. So I agree. Blizzard. That's true. Um, all right, um, we're going right here for Zerg. There's a 12 pool uh, standard build so far. And your queen coming out. And now, as Protoss, one thing um, that's interesting to note is that I'm, I'm building my buildings at the at my ramp. Which is something that a lot of Protoss do, and I, you know, figure I give it a try, and it's amazing. Well, it's what a lot of Terran do. It's interesting <clears throat> to see Protoss really focusing on this kind of uh, wall off now. Yeah, and well, I think the key to it is that Zergling. Once you get Zerglings in your base now, it's it's so hard to defend. And if you go for a massive Zergling build, just those two zealots and maybe like a sentry force field on the ramp can hold it off indefinitely until you get enough forces to defend. Now there is exactly like a one square path here does this would like for us say let's say um a, an immortal would this block an immortal from well no out, actually or? the entire protoss army ground army can fit through that one square oh, okay. path and i think it's really cool for protoss the way that this works uh, a lot uh, you know on team liquid they call it building your sim city properly as protoss um and it's just lining up your building so that you have that little pathway to get through and just small enough that one zealot can you know defend it um and it, it, it's actually kind of fun to line your buildings up like that and the cool thing about it is that, you know, that one zealot does sit right there and it can defend against, you know, an infinite number of Zerg. And once you build a couple stalkers behind him or a sentry for force field on the ramp, he really, it really becomes like a very defensible position. It's really cool. Yeah, I agree. Um, we have Zergling Speed just finished now. Um, the one thing I do find that is very effective against wall off like this is roaches. Um, yeah. Because a roach can still even from, even down here, be just hitting... Um, guys up here um and also another trick that i like is zerg is um, rah, rah, rah. yeah the, the roaches is, are really sorry i interrupted you go ahead yeah, is, is dropping creep right here and building a um a, a sunken colony and, yeah. and the sunken actually gets a uh, view over the ledge somehow and can and be attacking here now we just have a little bit of harassment um and you know even like you were talking about with the roaches um you know if you had build them and i actually i really want to focus on what's happening in this game instead mm -hmm. of talking about you know hypotheticals but but the cool thing is, you know, if you build the roaches, I can then build the, the stalkers, which, you know, that's one flaw of this build. We, we played like 13 games today, right? On this map, yeah. Um, just trying to, you know, really learn it. And one of the interesting things that I that I learned as the, as we played more and more games is I, is I tended away from the build that I'm using here, which the build I'm using here is a one gate into a fast robotics facility build to get that immortal and observer out really quickly. 
Um, and later on, what I started doing is not even building the robotics facility and just building like a massive amount of gateways because um, those stalkers, you don't really need at this point with some of the nerfs to roaches and small buffs to stalkers. You don't really need the mortals to kill the roaches. You can defend against roaches with stalkers. Hmm. Right here. Uh, Does he get him? Does he get him? Does he die? Does... No. No. Oh, wait. What? Nope. Oh man, how much you got away? You got yeah, well, well, I have speed. over every game now is Zerg, and, and this is huge. Overlord speed. If you're a Zerg player, Overlord speed is huge. It will win you games. You can do a flyover of any base, and you usually keep your Overlord alive. And also, as you'll start to see, um, creep drop. Being able to creep drop across the map is huge. It denies, or as I like to think of it, Overlord diarrhea poop. Yes, poopy poop. poop. <laughs> it's a nice expansions. I've watched Terran players with their flying little base have to go expansion to expansion, being denied over and over. Because yeah, it's, they can't it is push really out frustrating. And they can't land. Be, and especially also in my in in this situa situation, like I'm in here where I did a very defensive build. I'm going to be expanding late as it is, and then to not be able to expand because you have a stupid overlord pooping creep on top of, you know, my natural is like so. I like frustrating. to poop on things. It's, I like, yeah, like yeah. It's, it's really one of those things where you know I don't get a lot of opportunities to pee or poop on people in real life. Yeah. And so, like, this is my opportunity. Um, you know, and there's some people who like to, you know, go black on people. Yeah. But, uh... That's why... You know, that's not me. <coughs> that's I why I liquor. like, um... That's why I like building High Templar so much. Why? Because you get to electrocute people? You, get to, you, get to, <laughs> you want to electrocute people in real life? No, you get to you get to pee electricity on people. Oh. Like electric gremlin. Yeah. I right, see. So you have a, a probe. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, an observer. A, a flying probe. A flying invisible <laughs> probe. On patrol. I actually like that patrol there. So you're seeing everything. You see the hydra den. You see yeah. the evo chamber. I have a, a missile hex and going. So you know, plus one for the hydras. I'm actually upgrading my attack and building a robotic support bay right now for Colossuses. And that was a result of that observer. And you might be like, okay, so he built his robotic facility. What is he going to, you know, you, you know, what's he going to leverage that tech for? Immortals. Mm -hmm. No. Well, the first thing I built was an observer because I flew that observer right to your base and saw what you were building. And I'm reacting by building a lot of zealots because the zealots will counter the hydralisks. Um, and I'm gonna be tag and I start attacking immediately to Colossus because the Colossus are gonna counter the hydralisks. So I'm using the real advantage of that robotics tech facility is the observer to see what you're doing so I can counter. And now, and a Colossi build off the robotics facility as well. No, yeah, yeah, Colossi are built out of the robotics facility as well, but you have to build the robotics support bay for uh, all first. Um, and that's like an interesting tactic of you there, of attacking my back and pulling me away from the front so you can come in with your hydras. Yeah, and that's, you know, just part of this map. You know, you have the whole back door. It's such a large area, it's very hard to defend. You really need to, you know, keep an eye on it at all times. Yeah, and I was like, I was trying to warp in sentries here so I could put a force shield on the ramp to keep your hydras from escaping, but you actually got all the sentries before they finished warping in and were able to escape. Sadly, this is a pretty useless attack here. You know, it moved your, your probes real far off, but I mean, it, it, it didn't did kill stop me from Yeah, it you stopped know. me from, from harvesting for a little while. Um, but yeah, and... Uh, you know, personally, the way in the way that I play, and I'm sure you know this, is I, I once I start having things come in from the front and the back, I just start to like freak out and over and get overwhelmed. Yeah, and th this is the um, the con of of <laughs> the back door is once you open a door, <laughs> it is then open. <laughs> yeah, it's open for door. the devil to walk through. Yeah, for those mouthless or devils. like mouthless va protoss protoss vampires. Where are the fangs? Are there protoss vampires? Yeah, but where where do their fangs grow? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um so yeah so anyway here me coming in with my force in through the back door that you already made an open door um and part of my philosophy on this map uh, my personal philosophy has been uh you know i'm not gonna shoot those rocks because it just takes so much time to like work your way through the two sets of rocks but if you open the rocks for me i'm gonna attack you through them because that's just such an awesome path yeah of course well you know you're, you're utilizing every advantage that the other player is giving you just as you would with any other move now, in that attack, I actually, I misused my sentries because I think that attack would have gone, like, amazingly well if I had used the if Guardian Shield instead of the Force Shield in that situation. Well, you tried to block off. It was a little bit of a miss micro, but, you know, you use uh, Force Shield to such good effect, and I've seen yeah, Force see, Shield used to such good effect in general that... Me, I'm trying to clear away your, your, over, your Overlord to build an expansion, finally. I'm still only on my main base. You've had your natural up for a long time. I'm not able to do it even once again. And here, like, yeah, a couple of yeah, missed A little bit of a late shield, but still, you know, it, it blocks the Hydras from coming in. Yeah, this is true. And that's, you know, uh, and what are six Zerglings going to do in your main at this point? Yeah. Um, I'm actually a little interested. How many resources do I have right now? Because I think I'm doing a bad job macroing. 
Um, I, I probably have a, income uh, resources. You just click on one of my units. Oh yeah. Well, actually, I'm not doing that bad. I mean, I have 1,400 resources saved yeah, up, but so, you know, a little bit. But it's you, a little you bit, know. but it's not horrible. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's so awful. I really need to build some more um, gateways. And actually, if you look at my back ramp, you know. Uh, <laughs> what <you'll>, back ramp? <laughs> you'll see Hydralisk's coming to yeah. do the Badango on my Badango. You know, and and really, there's just a lot of harassment going on. You know, um, yeah. And you're re right you're really now. trying and to split just... my attention. And it was at this moment right now when my Protoss instincts really aligned to the Kala, and I t tapped into the true force. You can tap into that. I was tapped into the true force of that all Protoss are one with, and I summoned from within myself the strength to defend my base. And so I stopped getting overwhelmed by your multi-pronged attack, and the Protoss spirit was was with me, 